Welcome to Gotta Run. This is Will Sanchez. Tonight, I have a very, very special guest. His name is Oz Perman. He's a magician and a mentalist. Oz came to my attention when I was invited to run the Hampton Marathon in 2008. But I couldn't make it. But I kept track of my friend and I read the story. Oz made a flare when he finished as the first runner of the marathon. And it made such an impression on me that I needed to know more about him. And I learned he's a magician and a mentalist. So please welcome to the show, Oz Perman. Thanks, Will. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh, so let's get started by sharing with us a little bit about your background. Where were you born and raised? A little bit about your family. I was born in Israel, and I moved to the States when I was three, hence the unusual name, Oz. It's, everyone looks at it, and especially in my business, they think Oz, like Wizard of. It's actually pronounced Oz, but you know, a lot of people say it both ways. And I've uh, pretty much moved around. I lived a little bit on the East Coast, and I spent most of my years in the Midwest, in Wisconsin and Michigan. It's where eventually I went to school, high school, college. Which high school did you go to? I went to Farmington Hills in uh, Michigan, just outside Detroit, and then I went to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Now, when did you start running or learning? You had a gift for running, actually. The gift for running didn't exist at all prior to recently, if you could even call it a gift. I ran cross country and track for two seasons in high school, although running is uh, you know, a loose term for what I did. I mean, me and my friends, I pretty much did it because I had friends in it a lot of very cute girls in cross country. It was very much ulterior motives. Uh, I was not very talented. My fastest 5K split ever, 5K race, was 1957. Mm -hmm. And I think I threw up right at the end of it. So uh -huh. it shows you how much I was training back then when mm -hmm. the comparable runners were running 16s, you know, 15 something. I was not, I was a back of the packer. Interesting. So, well, tell us, how did you become a better runner? Because in my research, you won the Hampton Marathon in 2008. In fact, 2008 was very interesting. I think you also won the Westchester Marathon that yeah, year. Yeah, Westchester, New Jersey, you know, a bunch of the local races. So, so, so what, what made the difference for what you? What changed, right? Well, I finished college in 2003. I moved to New York. I uh, used to work on Wall Street, actually, for a couple of years prior to going over my you know, career as a professional magician and mentalist doing that full time. And my sister, I have twin older sisters, eight years older than me, mm -hmm. and one of them ran a marathon. She was running the New York City Marathon. And now that sounds like a normal thing. But back then I was like, are you crazy? You're running a marathon? She was not, not athletic, but she wasn't exactly marathon material either. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit shocked. And so when she ran the marathon, I full on sibling rivalry decided I'm gonna run a marathon too. <laughs> and so I couldn't get into New York, but I got into Philadelphia, which is a lot, you know, a big, marathon to do around here because it's easier to get into. In November, yeah. In November, yeah, yeah, a month later. So the training coincided and I ran the last uh, six or seven miles, paced my sister. She had a hard go, but she finished. And then I did Philly. And my first marathon, I thought I was going to try to qualify for Boston. I thought, oh, that's the time. That's what I need to do. Really? And that did not work out nearly as planned. <laughs> At mile 22, just hit the wall, train wreck. I was walking for about a mile and a half. And um, I was completely crushed. You know, in your spirit, you're just uh, walking, head down. Everyone's running by me. And I see two guys at one point that are also walking, the only other walkers. And up until this point, I'd been on track for a Boston qualifier, 310. And I decide I'm going to run to these guys who are about a few hundred yards ahead of me. I'm going to catch up and just walk with them. Mm -hmm. And so I start running, running. And about a minute into my run, when I'm halfway there, they look at each other, they nod, and they start running. And I get so mad, I scream, I don't even want to say the words I screamed at them, but you know how it is when you're at that point in the race. I go, you, you know, you jerks. And I was so adrenaline up that I end up running the rest of it. I ended up with a 321, uh, you know, not Your bad first, in, in bad first one. And then from there on, it just went better and better. I think my next one was a 256 and 250, well, and it just kept going down. What kind of training did you, did you discover for yourself that worked for you? I think one of the trainings, I stopped being on the treadmills much. My, initial training for my first marathon was almost entirely indoors mm -hmm. and now I run almost entirely outdoors. I haven't been on a treadmill in years. It's mm -hmm. just being outside, using the hills, getting out there and just running, uh, I think made a, a wealth of difference. I also started to do uh, more long runs, definitely incorporated more long runs, more tempo runs. Mm -hmm. So I do races or runs that are anywhere from, you know, six miles, a loop around Central Park, a 10K, or two to three loops, anywhere up to 18 miles that are much closer to race pace or even faster. Mm -hmm. And that just got me much, much faster, got me used to running. One 
little secret that I yeah. had was something called power cranks, which I discovered a few years ago. What is that? Power cranks are these cranks on your bicycle. Uh, you can use them on road bikes, tri bike, and they're independent cranks. So in essence, the crank where the um, pedals are attached to the bike, they're independent from one another. Mm -hmm. So one can be up, one can be down, they can both be together. It's not like riding a bike where your feet are always at opposite ends. Okay. So what that does differently is when you're clipped in, you have to pull up for the pedal to go up. You can't cheat by pushing down to make mm -hmm. the other one go up. Okay. See what I mean? Normally, you're not really using your hamstrings when you cycle. Mm -hmm. And this is when I was doing triathlons, Ironman. So I had a bike, it made sense. Mm -hmm. So what that does is when you do it on high RPM, it allows your hamstrings to get very, very strong, like rock strong, rock hard. Okay. And it increases your leg turnover. Mm -hmm. And literally in the course of six months, maybe even a year, I went from mid 240 marathon to breaking a 230. Yeah. I mean, awesome. huge difference. And that's that was what I credited. That is remarkable. Yeah. And any kind of uh, specialized coaching? Did you have a mentor? This is something you discovered you, for your own system. Yeah, no, it's funny. I never really joined any teams. I have a buddy that I train with now for about four years. His name is Michael Arnstein. Mm -hmm. He's quite well known in the uh, local circuit. He yeah. goes by the Fruitarian. He has a website. He He's notable because he only eats raw fruits and raw vegetables. That's for about three years now. And That's amazing. Oh, oh, I think. Uh, he's an incredible guy. We run together almost every day. OK, I, I, I think I was doing some research on you for yep. this show. And I, I ran it that name. He's the 80-10-10 guy. 80-10-10, he does a lot of that. And we've traded a lot of marathons. We're like, I won New Jersey one year, then he won it the next two. And then we're both maybe going to run it this year. And then Hamptons, he won, and then I won. And, we kind of keep it in the family wow. a lot of the time. But interestingly, you mentioned triathlon. So obviously, running wasn't enough. Now you needed to do the swimming and the biking. What led you into a, a more vigorous program like that? And Ironman, I think you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've, I was always a swimmer. That's I grew up being a swimmer. Okay. I was born practically in the water. I mean, I right. loved the water, the ocean, swimming. And so from about age five until 17, I was a competitive swimmer. That was oh, okay. my background. I'd always swim. and. The swimming part of the Ironman or of the triathlon was easy for me. Okay. That I enjoyed. I find it exhilarating. The okay. open water swim, I don't really need to train, and I can still give or take it an hour. I, you know, it's natural. It's mostly okay. technique. It's not like running. Okay. The cycling was new to me. The cycling is still new to me, if you will. I, I, you know, I don't, I'm not a good cyclist at all. I'm not fast. I'm, I've got like two left feet when it comes to being on the bike. <laughs> So but that's an area of improvement for you. <laughs> improvement, but I'm kind of, I'm mostly in the running world now. I've given okay. up the bike for the time being, okay. but uh, I did enjoy it. I did Ironman Wisconsin several years ago, and I was lucky enough to qualify for Hawaii. That's so amazing. That's a, that's a very prestigious uh, honor. Oh, thank you. And so Hawaii was incredible. Hawaii oh, yes. is such a, such an incredible race, such good energy. The people you meet there are the elite of the elite. It's almost like being the Olympics for the mortal man, for, right, the, for right. the mortal it man. Right, the wine. Boston Marathon. Exactly. Yeah. It's these people, you meet people that are, you know, some woman who's like 60 and she could out swim me like that, you know, yeah. and you're like, these people are the best in the world. Yeah. This is very exhilarating. Yeah. Uh, the race is very hot. I mean, I'll tell you, it's definitely warm out in Hawaii, uh -huh. but it was, it was very fun. The experience was amazing. Amazing. Other things I read about you, you also, do ultra marathons, like yes. 50 miles seems to be your specialty. 50 miles has been uh, my notable distance. That was last year, I was actually, I was happy. I've got like framed, I was. I ran the fastest 50 mile in the world, uh, according to Ultra Running Magazine. I ran. Now, what, what year was that? That was in 2009. 2009, was that the, uh, the Chicago Lake Yeah, Park? Yeah, Chicago, it's a really fast course. It's all flat and you're running right along the lake, Lake Michigan. Wow. I did it four years and, in a row. And you own the world record for No, not a world record. No. The US record, what is it? It's not, no records. I wish it was a record. What it's actually, it? it was just, that's not a popular distance. There's only so many people in the world running it. Okay. it was just, I, I ran the fastest one that the year. The fastest one that year? Uh, of anyone, yeah. Of anyone, okay. So the 50 miler for that year, maybe for a couple of years. That's no, the... there's some faster people. Oh, there's a okay. lot of, you know, there's And you comments. did it like in five hours, and. 31 minutes or yeah, something. Yeah, even last, 525. That was, I broke my own oh, you're, PR. Well, that is, that is an amazing performance. For, Thank you. For, that's a, almost magical. I was going 630s the whole way. That's, uh, it was pretty much just uh, on the a, money, 630s. That is an incredible performance. Thank you. Incredible performance. And we have to look into that crank. The power cranks. That's power a secret. Crank. I'm letting the secret out of the bag. Okay. I mentioned magical. When, when did you discover you had a talent for magic or an interest in that? It started also at a young age? That was in my teenage years. Uh, right around 13, had a bar mitzvah. Uh, my gift for my family was we went on a cruise to Bermuda. And on the cruise ship, there was a performer, a magician. 
and this guy absolutely blew my mind. I mean, I was wide-eyed, speechless, couldn't believe what he had done on stage. I was one of the people he called up on stage, which later my dad, I, I found out my dad got me in there. He talked to the guy before, he's like, get my, get my son up on stage, okay. it's his birthday. Okay. So I was absolutely amazed. And about, how old were you at this? I was 13. 13, Bermuda Cruise. And I was very much, and to this day I still am, I'm very, passionate person who's very obsessed when I get into something. When it's a, something I'm interested in, I, I don't mess around. I'm very focused, very driven, kind of like the, you know, the running, the magic. Mm -hmm. And so I bought every book I could. I bought every video. I was literally, you wouldn't have seen me without a deck of cards in hand between mm -hmm. age 13 to 18. Everywhere I go, cards, I'm always doing stuff, playing around. And it went from just an interest to performing. I started uh, doing magic shows, doing kids shows at first, working at restaurants locally, and then it just grew from there. It was almost uh, always part of my life. Wow. Even when I was uh, in college, I used it to pay for college. Okay. Really? Yeah. Really? So, so you're now a professional, That's meaning you took a secret oath or graduated <laughs> or how, how does one become a professional? Is there a, uh, a certificate or something? No, no. It's funny you would say that, right? That's, uh, I wonder what people from the outside of the world. There is somewhat of a secret society and community amongst, you know, magicians and mentalists. Uh, the way I became a professional was simply I was working on Wall Street. I had relatively long hours at my job, and I was also networking outside of my job as a performer. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I had a plan to become a professional. It's simply what I do. It's like breathing. So I was out there doing shows. I have business cards. People are calling me. Restaurants wanted me to work there. And before you know it, within two years, not only am I working a day job from you know 8 to 6 every day, but I also have shows almost every night and weekends. And it got to the point where... It's either I pretty much am working nonstop, 24-7, or I'm going to make the switch, give it a shot. Uh, I was relatively young at that point. Don't, I had no real requirements. I, I still think you're still young. <laughs> still you're relatively so young, young, right? But I, I meant in the sense of I had no, I don't have any children. I wasn't oh, okay. married. There was no overarching, you know, overwhelming responsibilities where if I couldn't leave my job, the career faltered. I could always go back to a corporate position, mm -hmm. I felt. Mm -hmm. So it was a calculated risk. And I also enjoyed it, and I, you know, I never looked back ever so since. So you're living your dream. I live in the dream. I've performed all over the world, uh, you know, five continents. Uh, That's a what is what is a mentalist? That's a very good question because when I think of magic, I think of people doing card tricks. I think of you know things floating, appearing, you know, bunnies out of hats, things of that sort. Mentalism is a completely different field. It deals a lot more with what people are thinking, okay. how you make your decisions. Am I able to influence your decisions? Am I able to seemingly read your mind, picking okay. up on your nonverbal communication, your okay. body language, mm -hmm. your tells? Let me give you an example. Okay. Rather than explain, I'll show you. Okay. I brought a book. I knew we were here, running, related. This is a book I've been reading recently. Terrific book, The Bunyan Derby. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's a 1928 foot race across America. Like I said, I, I'm into the ultra marathon these days. 100 mm -hmm. mile races, 135 mile races. Uh, I've got a lot of them planned. This is about, about I think, several hundred people running all the way across America. Mm -hmm. Grab it, Will. I'm going to turn my head. I'm going to look off the screen here. And I want you to flip through to any page you'd like. Feel free to read through. And I want you to just think of any word on any page. There's going to be literally thousands of options. But Will, the only thing I want you to make sure of is I want it to be a long word. Nine, 10, 11, 12 letters, at least nine letters long, something interesting. OK. Have you got something long, interesting yes. in mind? Did you change your mind a few times or no, just go with no. your first? Uh, no, uh, maybe once I changed it. Terrific. Close the book. I did. Now, you didn't even know what you were going to choose. Would you agree? I mean, you changed your mind midway through. No, that's true. I'm going to give this a shot. Pretty much for me to know what you're thinking borders on impossible. There's simply no way. You didn't even know what you were going to pick. I want you to think of the word. I want you to see all the letters in the word. Huh. Here we go. I'm going to go one step at a time. Think of the first letter for me. Think of that first letter. Imagine yourself saying it. You see, I'm watching his lips. He didn't, he didn't move his lips. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go initially with this. And tell us, so we all know, what was the first letter you were thinking of? G. G. Absolutely, I got it. And then think of the next one and the next one. And then I'm seeing it come together. It was the, the there's an A and an E. And I, you know what? I'm going to keep writing this down. I'm going to write the entire thing that I'm picking up. Something, it's, it's in the person, place, or thing category. I feel like this is more person, place, or thing. It's the place. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hold this off screen. I want them to know, everyone in the audience watching this, we have never spoken about this. There, I did not tell you that we're going to take right. a I never book knew out. About this book. never knew. Right. I want, let them know. This is not staged. Right. Tell us, what word did you think of? What is that word? Graveyard. Graveyard. <laughs> a 
bit morbid, but I like it. It was, it was, it's quite... Uh, that's a basic. But the way I do these things is one of two methods. One is I try to put my thought in your mind. I try to get you to choose what I want you to choose. Mm -hmm. The other is a little different. I try to pick up on what you're thinking. I saw the way you, I heard the G enunciated, and I saw the way graveyard, it just came out of you. It's hard to explain how, but that's, that's my job. That's what I've been studying years. The other method is for me to get you to choose something. Here's the plan. I, when I arrived here today, asked your producer to grab a newspaper, which they handed to me. Mm -hmm. Would you, can you concur? This is not a fake newspaper. This is the one that you guys handed me oh, when right, I walked right. in. Yep, yep. From my computer, I have printed out a letter. I want you to grab the newspaper, and if you would, Will, start to flip through and take out any page that you'd like. Pick it out. Take any one of the pages out, and I'm going to show the camera here so they can see I have a letter that's been printed. Can you confirm for us that this is printed on a computer? Yep, to whom it may concern, yeah. To whom it may concern. I didn't know who would be reading this today. I'm going to leave this right here in front of you. This is not handwritten. This has been printed. Have you got a page? Yeah. Hand me the rest of them. We don't need them. That's it. Now, you could have chosen any page. What page number are you on? Um, on page number five. Five. Tear it in half. Tear it right down the middle. Hold them out in front of you. Both? Both. And decide right now in your mind whether the left one or the right one feels heavier. Which one do you just want to drop onto the floor? Let it drop. Now ask yourself, how could I know that you would do that one? I'm going to take this one. I'm going to rip it right down the center. And I'm going to try to influence your decision. As soon as you say it, I drop it. Right or left? Which one should I drop? Right no. or left? Gone. I'm going to rip it again. Let's get rid of this one. Out of your way. Right or left? Left. Gone. Interesting. He keeps doing the same one. Now, reverse psychology. You ask yourself, will Will do the left again, or will he go to the right? Now that I said that, will it influence your decision making? Right or left? Left. Gone again. We'll do it once or twice last time. Right or left? Left. Yet again. One final time. I'm going to rip this. We're going to do it, you know what, one more time. We'll get a really small piece. Right or left? Right. And one final time, you tell me, right or left? Right. Gone. I'd like you to hold out your hand. I'm going to lay this right in the palm of your hand. I want you to put your finger right on it. The letter that I printed out. You made a total of eight decisions there. Eight different decisions. Each one could have gone right, could have gone left. Could have ripped this page, could have ripped that one. I'm going to read this out loud, what is printed on here. To whom it may concern, every day of our lives, we make hundreds and hundreds of decisions. Things as diverse as choosing what to have for breakfast, I mentioned earlier, cereal and dates for me, healthy one, which flavor of toothpaste to use, mm -hmm. or whether to walk the stairs or take the elevator. I assume, are you a stairs kind of guy? Mm -hmm. Me too. Some of these decisions we make for ourselves, others are made for us in varying degrees. Part of my demonstration today will involve the use of suggestion both on a conscious and subconscious level. If I have applied my powers of suggestion properly, then my helper will now have a small piece of newspaper in his right hand, or in his left hand, I switched it up on you, and under his index finger will be the word Schneider. An average newspaper contains over 100,000 printed words, any of which could have been arrived at given the random process we have undertaken. Sincerely, that's me, O's Perlman. Schneider, S-C-H-E-N-E-I-D-E-R, please, Look under your finger. It's actually turned over, the part that neither of us could have seen. And tell me, tell everybody, what word were you pushing right down on? Uh, Schneider. <laughs> that is amazing. Every year I put together a list. I take a bunch of my business cards and I write down a list. Just, I don't know if they're going to catch all this on camera. Name off some of these people that are in here. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey made the list. Elvis. Elvis Presley. Uh, Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Celebrities, right? Kobe right. Bryant is a big basketball player. George, George W. Bush. Bush. Jerry Seinfeld. John Travolta. Celebrities. This is 2010's most famous group of people. 50 different celebrities. Angelina Jolie. Right. I don't know if we have any runners in here. I'm going to mix these up. And what I'd like you to do is pick out anyone you'd like. Reach in and we'll take a celebrity. Be particular. Be picky. I'm going to close my eyes and look away. And maybe if we could get a zoom in from the camera, I'm going to look away to see who that person is. Have you got it, Will? Yeah. And sneak it back into the middle. I'm going to stay looking away. I want to keep everything fair. And we'll close this up. 
we'll put everything away, and voila, I'll open my eyes. Tell me, just a yes or no, don't give me clues. Are you familiar with who this person is? Celebrity, yes. Okay, I want you to imagine this person showing up as a surprise guest right now. He looked excited, I think you no, like this person. Excited. That would be good, that would be good. That would be great, great well, runner. Great, great runner? <laughs> oh, I wonder what that means. My business card and a pair of scissors. I want you to imagine, in your mind's eye, see this person's face, mm -hmm. what they look like. Mm -hmm. The hair, the ears, okay, I'm starting to see it. A smile, the person seems to be smiling. I'm gonna go with the hair. And the eyes, you remember earlier I was telling you about the University of Michigan. This is what I was doing two of the four years instead of studying, yes. Really? Parents were very happy. Go what blue. What was your major in that? <laughs> it, was, it was cutting out snowflakes. Okay. No, <laughs> electrical engineering. And I'll go there and there and the, the teeth and there's shrapnel flying everywhere. I apologize. The person cleaning the set after me will be very, very mad at me. That's it. The jawline seemed a bit more edged, a bit more hardened. I think probably, probably a male. Am I right? 50-50, but I think it's a man. You're correct. What is this man's name? I am all done cutting. Tell me, Will, who, who is he? Who are you thinking about? Barack Obama. The president, Obama. Say hello to Mr. Barack <laughs> Obama. <laughs> that is, I, I wish we had a live audience for this. This is amazing. I will uh, give you a little souvenir here. Where can people find you? You said you mentioned that you work in the New York area. I do. I'm based out of Manhattan, though my performances are all over the globe. I do a lot of corporate events, a lot of private parties, both here in the tri-state area and, like I said, throughout. So the best way to find me is generally on my website. You can see uh, whether I have any upcoming public performances. Mm -hmm. I've done a few off-Broadway shows. There's several... Uh, Nice Are you still doing an off board I do not currently, no. I've just been simply too busy with corporate travel and, and a lot of different performances that uh, it's usually something I do every few years when I put together a block of time and mm -hmm. then I commit to it. Otherwise, it's just it's very difficult with so many private appearances. What about uh, challenges in terms of uh, athletic? Are you doing another? I do. I have some very big races coming up. I uh, am intending to sign up, keep my fingers crossed, for Badwater. It's oh, a 135 mile race. Oh, my goodness, that's 135 miles. And then also the Spartathlon. Is, uh, it's called Spartathlon. It's probably one of the hardest foot races in the world. It's, you run from Athens to Sparta. It's an epic run. It's one that Pheidippides did, you know, Pheidippides who created yes, the marathon. Yes, yes. Apparently, he ran from Athens to Sparta. It's about 250, 246 kilometers. It's 153 miles, and you have a 36-hour cutoff. <laughs> so it is an incredibly challenging race over a bunch of mountain passes. What, what is that? That's going to be taking place September 30th and October 1st. I'm signing up for that, and I'm doing the Leadville 100. And uh, I may or may not try to make it out to uh, run the New Jersey Marathon, maybe the New York City Marathon. We'll see how the year goes. It usually is just how many things can I juggle between performances and running. So once I get in good shape, I want to That is amazing take advantage. that you can do both. Is, does running and magic go together with you? It does it? Every time I, I finish, and usually if I win a marathon, you always see me with the deck of cards at the finish. That's always my, uh, my signature move. And the reporters always ask me, where did the deck of cards come from? Uh -huh. Of course, I can't, I can't tell you that. Okay. That's, they see me, they go, you're only wearing shorts, where did the, where did the cards come from? Uh, these are oversized, you These said. are big cards, yeah, exactly. But uh, they do come together. There's definitely a component. Some of my biggest inspirations in terms of uh, these routines that I perform, mm -hmm. they, they come to me while I'm running. Oh, that's I mean, I think it's the same as people that are, uh, you know, writers or actors or any type of performance. Is when I'm running, I do some of my best thinking because I'm so relaxed, you know, you completely zone out, you get that runner's high and my mind just somehow clicks into gear. Is there anything else you can show us? Uh, we have a few minutes. Do you left. know what, Let, let's give it a shot. I'm going to hand you my wallet. Don't run off on it, Will. I'm gonna leave this right here. I'm gonna leave it in your pocket. Okay. What I'd like you to do is think of someone that's been a guest on your show. Mm -hmm. Now, however many shows you've had, I assume there's lots and lots of people you could choose from, very mm -hmm. interesting characters. And now, I want to mention, I have not asked you about this before. You had no idea that I was about to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. I want you to know this is not staged. This is not set up. Have you got someone in mind? Yes. Now, this could be someone recent. This could be somebody from years ago. This could, I don't even know. It might be even, you know what? It could be somebody that you would like to be a guest on the show. I don't mind that. Okay. What I'd like you to do is I'm going to turn my back. I want you to write down just this person's first name. Take a moment, you can change your mind a few times, just a first name, no last names. Go ahead and write this person's first name. Wait till I turn, and I'm gonna look away, 
And you know what, don't even show the camera, just hold on to it. Okay, got it. You got it. And if I could, I'm gonna take that pen out of your way. Did you know who you were gonna pick or did it just pop in your head? I do hope it, well, it, both. Both. <laughs> when you mentioned it personally. Do this, grab the magnet, put that aside. Put this aside. The note. I trust you, you're not gonna change your mind, destroy the evidence. Let's rip this thing into shreds, and if you would, hold out your hand, destroy it. This person, think, whether it's a man or a woman, just in your head, think to yourself, male, female, look this way, male, female, it's the way his eyes just shifted to the left, it's a female, I could tell right away. <laughs> Have that little look in your eye. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, this person, female, I might take down some notes, do you think you're going to see this person again soon? No. No. If you were to, or speak to them, or if there's a phone call, any, any type of interaction, take out that wallet for a moment. Oops. Let me put this here. No problem. Pick out the wallet. I forgot I had that. Well, he was going to take all my I money. Know, my I metro card and everything. I'm going to put this aside. <laughs> Inside, there's another little portfolio. I mentioned my metro card. I live here in the city. And here's a business card, something for you to keep and remember me. Grab that and I personalized it for you. If you were to speak to her, mm -hmm. read the back, read it out loud, in fact. Say hello to Joy for me. <laughs> Unbelievable, unbelievable. I was thinking of Joy Johnson, who hasn't yet appeared. I haven't put her up on, uh, on my Facebook. That's the coincidence, that's uh, That that's is how amazing. You know. How did, I, I don't, tell me. Right, I, that you is probably amazing. have to catch me at about 30 hours into my running, when I'm out of my mind, I but, might but spill the gave, secrets. But you gave yeah. the clue. To, uh, I'm, I'm somehow transmitting these information to you, and you're sensi sensitive yes. enough to pick this up. Now send so me you must, your, your social security number and ATM pin uh, code. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, interesting. So you must be able to spot liars like that. That's one of my talents. It's one of the good <laughs> techniques. You're, you're almost like a human light detector machine. You, I do some of that in my show. And I picked up something else. I don't know if this was in the back of your head or it's been circling. You, you had something about a, a place, something about a Australia or Austria? Yes, Is that yes. was that in your head somewhere? Yes. I just had a feeling. Oh my goodness. This, folks, I am stunned. You can find Oz on his website, ozperman.com. You got it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Will. I, Thanks I, for I having me on here. I am overwhelmed. I am overwhelmed. Folks, this is Will Sanchez of Gotta Run, and I am overwhelmed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.